Hi, and welcome to part nine of my automating Active Directory with PowerShell tutorial series. In the last video, we went over uh, creating our new users. So now the only two parts left is really to sync our existing users and to disable and remove our users that have quit or gotten fired. So we're going to work on parts of the synced users. Um, so what we're just going to do right now is we're just going to break the problem down of synced users um, a little bit. Uh, so we know that we're going to have to check the username um, because if the person's name has changed, like their last name or first name has changed, uh, their username will also change. Uh, so we know that. Uh, we also know that if they have potentially changed positions, they could also change departments. So possibly uh, change OUs. And then, of course, update any other fields um, like position, office, and any of those. So we have three steps here. Um, what I can determine for sure is the check username. Uh, we're probably going to want to make that into a function. So that's what we're going to be working on today. We're going to write a small little function. Uh, to basically take in a given name, a first, uh, so the given name, the surname, and the current username. And we're going to be checking to see if that current username is okay or if it needs to be changed. Um, so what we're going to do is actually the easiest way to do this is to actually go back and find our new username function because it's going to be very similar to that. And there's actually going to be just a few tweaks that we need to do to this function in order to actually have our new function. So we're going to call this check username. And then we have our parameters of given name, surname, and domain. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a uh, parameter here, and we are going to make it mandatory. So let's create that here. And we are going to name this uh, parameter, we're going to make it a string, and we are going to name it current username. Perfect. So we take in the given name, surname, current username, and domain. We already have our regular expression pattern, so we want to remove spaces, dashes, and apostrophes. And then we have our loop to check. Now, uh, the loop is really the part that we're going to be really changing. Um, so we had before, we had our do while loop, and we were basically looping through the possible usernames until um, we weren't getting a result back for get AD user. Uh, where the SAM account name is like the username, and uh, the username wasn't uh, like the last name and first name of the person, meaning that there was no other possible options later on because all the options were already taken. So what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to add one more uh, condition, actually, and that's going to be it for this loop. So we're going to have to add a and here, and we're going to do username not like current username. So what this does is basically it'll keep going through the loop until it doesn't find a username with that name or the username is equal the last name and first name or if um, the username uh, becomes the same thing as the current username, then it's going to exit out of this loop. And then what we're going to do here is we also have this if statement that if get ad user sam account name like username pulls up something, we throw currently that no usernames are available for this user. Now we already know that if the username doesn't change, well, it will pull back a, a result here. Um, but that username is still available because it's just keeping uh, its own username. So what we're going to want to do here is actually just kind of wrap this in parentheses here. And actually, I see one little mistake here. Actually, we're going to add server. And we're going to pass in domain here. And we're going to do the same thing here just for 
It's not super necessary if you're running it on the domain, uh, but I'm going to update that as well up here just for the sake of having it as possible bug free as we can get. All right, so once we have this wrapped in here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do the and again. And we're going to put username not like current username. So what this does, what this if statement does, so let's say if we pass in um, a given name, a surname, and a current username, and the username doesn't change. So we go through this do while loop. We're going to get to the username is like current username. So it's going to exit out of the loop. And we get to this if statement. It'll pull back a user. So that'll be true. But then this will be uh, false because the current username will be like the username. So that will instantly make it go into the else statement and throw back the username. So this is exactly what we want. Um, so let's actually just give this a test here. Uh, so let me just pull up my Active Directory here. and We could just look up a user. And we will do some tests. Uh, so we have here in Toronto, we have our LC Murphy with the name Murphy E. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're just going to run this function so it gets created. Perfect. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to do check username. And we're going to do given name is going to be, I believe it was Elsie. And then surname is going to be Murphy. And then the current username is Murphy. E, and the domain is jacked.ca. So let's get this back here. So we see that it actually just gives us back the same username because the username doesn't need to change. Now, if we do LC to Emma Murphy, in theory, this will not have to change the username either. The person just changed their first name from LC to Emma. That's perfectly fine because it still matches our first name, last name, our first, uh, our last name, first initial. Sorry, uh, but now if we decided to change the name to let's say uh, Jason, so Elsie became Jason here, and we do this check, we actually get back the username Murphy J. Um, so that's super awesome. Uh, and now let's do. Um, let's go back to LC. Now the username will not have changed. It's still Murphy E. And let's change the surname to Smith. So that will change to Smith E, I believe, unless there's already a Smith E. Um, so yeah, so it gives us back Smith E. But now let's try to see if we can actually, um, let's change it to Potter. Because we have another user in Vancouver named Ethel Potter. So if we change the last name to Potter here, there is already a username Potter E. So this should give us Potter E L. Um, but obviously the current username is still Murphy E because that's the user we're referencing. So let's run this here. So now we get Potter E L. So it is working correctly. It will not give us a username that already exists. It will give us the same username if nothing has really changed. And um, if it needs to increment, it'll increment. If it's just a last name change and there's no username with the first with the last name first initial, it just gives us that right away. So this is exactly what we need for that function. This will make um, the syncing user data much easier because we can call this function uh, with the given name and surname, make sure that nothing's changed, and then we can use that. Um, to then update it if it has. 
So that's going to be it for this video. Um, we just really wanted to build the check username. The next video will be quite lengthy because we will be doing the entire sync user function. So we'll be going over updating the entire AD user with all the new uh, data, updating the username if it needs to be changed, changing the OU if it needs to be changed, um, and then passing that through. And then in the video after that, we will be disabling and removing the users in one last function. And then that'll be it. So I will see you on the next video. Please be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks.